Hey, what is going on guys? Welcome back to another video. So today we're taking another look at PS4 emulation, but with a bit of a twist because emulation has come under fire recently with Nintendo going after some popular Switch emulators, forcing them to shut down permanently. And the last thing we want is for that to happen to PS4 emulation before it really gets off the ground. Now emulation has always been in a bit of a gray area, but it's generally been accepted that it's okay for emulators to exist as long as they don't use any copyrighted code and anything that is required from the original system like BIOS files or the games to run on the emulator, those need to be obtained by the user themselves by dumping their own original game and any files from their own console. So that's what we're gonna try and do today, set up the Shad PS4 emulator as it's intended by getting all of the required files ourselves and taking up my own retail copy of Bloodborne here and get it running on the PC as God intended, but mainly just to show you guys what the process is of dumping your own games to get them running on the emulator. So let's go ahead and take a look at this here. Okay, so the first step is to dump our retail copy of Bloodborne here. So to do that, we are going to need to get our hands on a jailbreakable device, like a jailbreakable PS4 or PS5. Jailbreakable PS4s are much easier to obtain than jailbreakable PS5s are, they're a lot cheaper and the latest firmware for the PS4 is 11.0 thanks to a recent jailbreak which basically means that there are more jailbreakable PS4s in circulation that are still on a firmware of 11.0 or below. So that's your system software version if you want to check to see if your PS4 is jailbreakable but we're not really going to dive into the whole process of the PS4 jailbreak here in this video. So once we have our jailbreakable PS4 here what we're going to do is insert our copy of Bloodborne and we also want to get it updated so we're going to check for updates to make sure that we are downloading the latest update for the game. Now not all of the latest updates can be installed on jailbreakable PS4s because they're running older firmwares and some of the latest updates require higher firmwares but I will show you how you can download specific updates for your games so that when we dump them they're dumped with the update so that we'll also be able to install and run the updates on Shad PS4 as well with our emulator. So the next step here is to run a homebrew application called Items Flow. This is what we're gonna use to dump the game. We also want to connect up a USB drive that has enough storage space on it so that we can dump all of the game files onto the USB. So plug that USB drive into your PS4 here and we're gonna run the Items Flow application. And then from here, we're going to select the game in Items Flow. And you can see we do have an option to install retail updates from Items Flow. This will allow you to select a specific game patch that you want to install onto the game. And then you can dump the game with that update so that you'll have that update available on the emulator. So if you want a specific update instead of the latest one, you can do that. But we've already got the latest update installed for Bloodborne, which is 1.09. So what we're going to do here is just select the option to dump and then we'll select dump all which will dump the game and the update and that's going to dump that over to our USB drive. Now there are many other ways that you can dump the game files from the PS4. You can use FTP for example. There's also a dumper payload which will similarly dump the files to a USB drive for you. In this case we're just using items flow because it's kind of the easiest way to dump the game files here. So eventually we'll get prompted to create the gp4 file you don't really need to do this you can just say no to this because we're not going to be generating a package file from these decrypted files okay and once it's done dumping all of the game files including the update we should be all good to go you can see here it says it's completed without errors which is what we want to see one thing that you can also do as a bonus is that if you have any save files for the game so you can see here when i'm running bloodborne on my ps4 i do have a save file created already which is at the beginning of the game, but doesn't really matter. If I want to use that save file on the emulator and transfer it over, that is another option that we also have. So in order to dump our save data, we can use another homebrew app on the PS4 called Apollo. So if we run the Apollo save tool here, we can then head on over to the HDD saves section. And in here, we can scroll down until we find our Bloodborne save file. We'll select it here, and then we'll use the option to copy the save game. And then of course we're going to select our USB drive as the location where we're going to copy that save file to. And that will actually extract the decrypted data from the save file which can be loaded by the emulator without having to re-sign any save files. So that is what we want there. So once we've got that exported we've got everything we need from the PS4 as far as the game is concerned. So if we switch back over to our computer here now that we have everything we'll plug our USB drive into our computer and you can see we have our dumped files here. 
as well as our save file. So what we want to do is download Shad PS4 here. You can grab the latest releases here. So if we take a look at here, there's a pre-release build we could go for. I'll go ahead and download the Windows 64 QT build here. So with that, we'll go ahead and open this up. We'll create a new folder called Shad PS4 for our emulator, and we'll extract all of the files into that folder here on the desktop. Okay, so with this, we'll now take our files from our USB drive. So we've got the game here. We've got these dot completed files, which just shows that the dumping was complete. The items flow folder contains logs, so we can delete those. And then of course, we've got the PS4 folder, which contains our Apollo save file. So here's our save file for the game right here. And then we also, of course, have the game itself, the game and the update. So what we're going to do is take all of the files that are in the patch folder here. We're going to basically cut them all. So we'll highlight them all, cut them out of here and paste them into the game folder. So inside the game folder, we have image zero. And inside here, this is where we're going to paste in the files for the patch. It says here, replace the files in the destination. We'll say yes. So all we're really doing here is installing the patch manually by taking all of the files for the game patch and just pasting them into the files for the game. That way we get the game fully updated here. So we're just going to let it do its thing here. Okay, there we go. That didn't take too long. If you do have a GP4 file in here, we don't really need that for now. We can get rid of that as well. So the next step is to create a game library for Shad PS4, where we're going to put all of our PS4 game dumps that we want to run in the emulator. So I have a drive here, another hard drive that has enough space. We're going to create a new folder called PS4 games. I might actually just use an underscore because I don't know how Shad PS4 handles spaces and file names. So anyway, we've got our PS4 games folder here and then we'll create our Bloodborne entry. So Bloodborne, we'll go ahead and create a folder there. And all we want to do is, of course, go into that folder and then copy all of the game files from our image zero folder from our game dump. We're just going to cut all of the files out of here and paste them into our Bloodborne folder in our games library. Okay, so this is all we should really need here to be able to get the game to initially boot in the emulator. So let's give this a try. We'll run Shad PS4. It's going to ask us for our game location, our games library, so we'll browse for it. So again, in my case, we'll select our PS4 games folder here, select folder, we'll click OK. And boom, there we go. You can see we have Bloodborne showing up in here. And it does show that it is on version 1.09. So our game patch is installed. So let's try and run it. We can just double click it or hit the play button to load. And there it goes. It is actually launching. Now we're still not done because we can actually get the emulation to run a lot better than this right now. So we can hook up a controller here. We'll play offline. And I do recommend doing this at least once just so that the emulator can create all of the necessary files for the game. Uh, which will be handy for when we transfer our save over. So there we go. We can see it is actually running right here. But again, it's not running in the most optimal way right now because it's not using any of the system modules right now. So if we go ahead and close out of the emulator here. So what we can do to improve the stability is if we go to Shad PS4 on GitHub and we scroll down to game compatibility, you can see here that it recommends that you install the necessary modules. So you've got all of these different SPRX files that it recommends that you have installed in the SCE modules folder, the user sys modules folder. So we can actually dump these from our PS4 directly. These are not required for the emulator to run as we can plainly see it was able to load the game. But in order to improve the compatibility and improve the emulation, we are going to want to have these modules installed. So we can grab those from our own console, from our jailbroken PS4. Jailbroken PS4s have the ability to enable an FTP server by going into the gold hand settings and then the server settings. And we have the option to enable an FTP server as long as your PS4 is connected to the network and has a valid IP address, we'll be able to remote access the file system through FTP. So that's the next step here. So I'm going to go onto FileZilla and enter my PS4's IP address. And then the port number is 2121. We'll quick connect. That gets us connected here. Okay, so now that we have access to the file system, we can head over to the system folder and then go to the common folder and then we have the lib folder, which contains all of the modules. So all of the SPRX files. So we can just select the ones that are required from the emulator from the list. So this compatibility list here will get all of those SPRX files selected. 
Okay, I have all of the modules selected here. So we just need to go into the Shad PS4 emulator folder, go into the user folder, and then go into the SCE modules folder, which is currently empty. And we're just going to drag and drop all of those required modules here into the system modules folder. And there we go. That's us got them all copied over here. The last step that we can do is if you did want to take a save file that you had on the PS4 and run that on the emulator now, we can also transfer over our save file. So the save file on our USB drive that we exported with Apollo was in the PS4 folder, Apollo folder. Then we've got this folder here, and this is all of the extracted save data. So all we need to do is grab all of the data here apart from the SCE system file, and we can just copy that, all of that save data, and then we can go to our Shad PS4 folder, go into the user folder, go to the save data folder, and then go to the folder here for your game, and then the title ID of the game here, and this is where the save file is located. So if we go in here, we have the save file here. So we can just delete all of this data and replace it with the save data from our PS4. Now there's also a couple of mods that we should also install. We've got this Vertex Explosions fix that we can download here on Nexus Mods. Just do the manual download. We also have SFXR Visual FX Restoration. This is just for Intel CPUs. You don't need this if you have an AMD CPU, for instance. And these mods just remove or replace existing effects within the game that the emulator is not really able to handle yet. So we want to replace those to minimize crashes and other instability issues. So all we have to do is open up the zip files or 7-zip files. We take the DVD root PS4 folder from the mod and extract it into our game location, overriding the files from the original game. And we just do the same with the second mod here as well. And of course, there's also lots of other mods that you can download for Bloodborne, not just fixes, but various other tweaks to the game. They're all pretty easy to install using the same method we just did here. So anyway, now that we've got those fixes applied, we should be good to actually get the emulator set up now. If we head into the settings menu, we can take a look at some of the settings. We can make sure we're using the nightly release. You can also check for updates. You can enter your username, you know, enable full screen if you want. We've got the log type, which should be on async, I believe. So we'll make sure we save that. Also, the graphic settings, we're going to select our graphics card so it's not using the integrated graphics. And path should be fine. Debug should be fine. We'll just leave all of that stuff off. And then all we have to do is click save and close. Then we can also go into the settings and we now have an option under utils to download the cheats and patches. So we can download the cheats for the installed games. These are the gold hen cheats and the gold hen patches. We can also do the same thing here with the patches and download those. And then if you right click on the game, we'll have the option to select cheats and patches. And then we can select whatever cheats we want for the game. There's a few different cheat files. And then the patches, which you can enable what you want here. I'm going to enable skip intros, disable chromatic aberration and motion blur, because those can be problematic uh, with the game on the emulator as well. And we'll also enable the 60 FPS patch with delta time and save that to unlock 60 FPS. And that should be pretty much it. We should be all good to go here. So if we run the emulator, we should be able to load into the same save file that we had when we were running the game on the PS4 as well. So game is running. We can see the 60 FPS patch in the bottom right hand corner has been applied. And now we can click continue and load up our save. Okay, and here we go. We're back in the game in the same place we left off on the PS4, except we're now running it on our PC, which is pretty awesome here. And there's been a lot of improvements made to this emulator, especially for Bloodborne, since I last uh, ran this here. We can see lighting is working now, textures are working now when they weren't previously. And also with these mods that we've installed, shouldn't crash when we fire a weapon or we try and attack in the game or get hit by enemies, which is something that would commonly crash the emulator before. Although with these mods installed, that should prevent that from happening. So let's go ahead and try and attack an enemy here and you can see that we're not crashing, which is pretty sweet. So we've successfully taken our retail copy of Bloodborne, our retail PS4 disc game, and we've managed to dump that with a jailbreakable PS4 along with a save file and get it running on another device on a PC without the original hardware. So this is great for preservation to preserve your PS4 games into the future. Get yourself a jailbroken PS4 so you can dump your games and have them backed up on your PCs so that you can run them in emulators like these as they mature and you're able to fully play these games in these emulators in the near future. 
So yeah, hope you guys enjoyed this video or found the information useful. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe. And once again, I'll hopefully see you guys in the next video.